Thanks for being here. This is a great experience for us. It's very deep and it's, you know, inspiring to play for uh, the music and the legacy of Claudio Roditi. And the people in the back should be in the front. <laughs> We're going to play um, a video by Claudio. Send us a video uh, of thanks. One second, please.
Sorry about that. They're my friends. That's why I can take this uh, opportunity to, to say. Just. Okay. So uh, before we play the video, is uh, I don't know if you know that Claudio is suffering from a very bad um, sickness. He has prostate cancer. He has a GoFunding page that hopefully everybody could contribute. And uh, he was uh, very kind because he cannot be here. He's under chemo and a lot of things happen. So he sent us a video that I will f I'm gonna play it. This, uh, so the people that knew Claudio how he was like two years ago is gonna be a little, you know, impressed. But he's doing well. But this is not easy. So we could probably help him out if we could pray for him as well. All right. know that I love you all. I love you all. Dear Fernando Brandão, Oscar Stagnaro, and all the musicians that are playing at this June 17th concert at Berkeley dedicated to me, I want to thank you all for the amazing idea and bringing it into reality. You know that I'm dealing with some serious health issues and traveling has been impossible for the last two years. If a jazz musician doesn't travel to bring his or her music to different lands, one cannot really make a living. The GoFundMe page that my friends John Lee and Frank Morton created has been a lifesaver. And now this concert that you guys are organizing on my behalf will be an incredible help. The drummer Pascal Medellis, <clears throat> who was also a student at Berkeley when I was a student at this amazing institution, organized a concert for me in Rio de Janeiro last year. Unfortunately, it rained cats and dogs that night, but I highly appreciated the idea anyway and their effort. When I was a student at Berkeley, trumpeter Jeff Stout was one of my first teachers there, and it gives me tremendous pleasure to know he's playing at this concert. I wish there was enough time to mention every one of you on this video but it would take at least a couple of hours to acknowledge every name and what our connection has been. Please know that I love you all and thank you for the beautiful music you have shared with me. I would like to bring up the name Pete Chavez, an amazing saxophone player with whom I did so many gigs in the 70s in Boston. At one gig in 1975 at Pooh's Pub, and some of you will remember the place, Pete introduced me to a waitress named Kristen. We have been together ever since, and it's now 45 years later. I would like to mention trumpeter Mark Harvey, with whom I had a big band that was a huge success in Boston in the early 70s. Also, Charlie Perkins, Rob Battles, and Justin Freed, who announced all the jazz concerts we played back in those days. Charlie and Rob gave us enormous promotion in their jazz shows at WBUR. We cannot forget Eric Jackson also. All the great supporters of the music who have already left us were disc jockeys Ron De La Chiesa and Tony Chenamo. The late Ray Murphy wrote for the Boston Globe and did wonders for jazz and especially our music. Love you all and have a nice gig. Good evening. Hearing Claudio's words reminds all of us who know him of his humility and caring. And that's why we're here, to celebrate him, honor him, and send him our love. Um, my name is Charlie Perkins. Claudio was kind enough to mention me in his video. I, I had the honor to present jazz on the radio in Boston in the 70s, primarily on WBUR, which had all jazz and classical music programming all day and night, if only there were such a radio station today. I should mention that Claudio was here with us in the cloud, if that's the right word is being streamed live on Facebook, so Claudio is watching all of us and how much we love him and, and this music. And you can watch this later on Facebook at, I think, Latin Music Studies at Berkeley. 
uh, on, again on Facebook. The, the, the 70s were a special moment for music in Boston and Claudio was very much at the center of that. He came to Berkeley as a student and quickly became one of the most respected and sought after musicians in our community. I came to know Claudio well as a friend and a musician I admired. Wayne Shorter had come out with Native Dancer, a wonderful album I hope all of you know. That album introduced us to Milton Nascimento. I called Claudio and asked him about this magnificent musician and my new love for Brazilian music because that's suddenly all that I was listening to and playing on the radio and I was hoping Claudio would be my teacher and, and introduce me to much more. But he said, sort of to my surprise, I love my heritage and Brazilian music, but I came here to become a better jazz musician. So the players that mean the most to me right now are Booker Little and Richard Williams. So Richard Williams, I knew Booker Little, I immediately went to the Harvard Coop to find a Richard Williams record and figure out what made him so special to Claudio an obscure record produced by Nat Hentoff, also from Boston on Candid Records. And suddenly I, I heard this wonderful trumpet player and could hear the influence that he had on Claudio's playing uh, at that time. Jazz had a sudden revival in Boston in the 1970s as many people came together to make it happen. We were lucky to have a wide range of clubs within just a few blocks. The Jazz Workshop in Paul's Mall down Boylston Street, that way, I think. Pooh's Pub around the corner where Claudio just mentioned he was so fortunate to have met his wife. Uh, the Merry Ground at the Copley Plaza Hotel. Wally's still there and Michael's Pub by Symphony Hall. And that meant there was a real overlap and musicians could, could go from one club to another and one gig to another. and and share their performances, share in their performances each night. And much of that revival was due to a group of people who put their heart and soul into this music, creating opportunities to present music that the clubs would not, in churches, parks, and concert halls. The Jazz Coalition was one of those groups, producing an annual jazz week throughout the city, jazz all night, in churches, how we managed to stay there until six in the morning when there was a free breakfast. We were, we were, young, we were younger then. Maybe some other things helped too, I don't know. And, and concerts celebrating Boston's musical heritage. I'm proud to introduce the co-founder of the Jazz Coalition and another very dear friend of Claudio's and the co-leader with Claudio of a legendary band in Boston that was one of our best, Mark Harvey. And Claudio, we love you. And, and Mark? Thank you, Charlie. That was beautiful. Hello, Claudio. How are you doing? We've been trading emails the last couple of days, so it's nice to be in touch virtually anyway. Um, so, um, the, the, among the, in addition to the various clubs and uh, locations that Charlie just mentioned, there was a very improbable locale which was on the edge of the old West End. Some of you know the story of the West End that was destroyed as part of urban renewal, so called. And uh, the Old West Church, where I was ensconced as an intern minister at the time, uh, we decided to do a lot of things with jazz, uh, jazz all night, one of them, jazz week, those things. And uh, that's where I first, I think, first met Claudio. We, on our very first all-night concert in 1971, he had a band called Os Cinco. And then uh, another, in the, the year following that, in 1972, he had the idea to put on a benefit for the ailing Kenny Dorham. Uh, this is an example of how karma comes back to do something great. We did a, a benefit for Kenny Dorham, who was ailing. Now we're doing a benefit for Claudio. So we had a wonderful evening with that. And then um, the uh, next year, 1973, I organized a group. It was about 12 brass players in a rhythm section at the Christmas time, and I called it Aardvark. And um, that's a band that's still going strong. Claudio was part of that, along with Raul de Souza and a number of people. 
And uh, we went to Justin Freed's house for a New Year's Day party. I was just saying Justin's in the house, another of our stalwart members of the jazz community. And uh, Claudio said, well, you know, all those brass players are nice. I mean, he was one of them. Uh, but what about, what about having some saxophones? Just that sort of charming way he had. And so the next thing I know, we have a big band. Uh, we modestly called it the All-Stars Big Band because it, we rounded up some of the best players in town. And we found this little hole in the wall club called Debbie's, which a number of you probably don't even know about. But if you, uh, if you go situate yourself mentally where the um, Boston Garden and uh, North Station are, come up about three or four blocks away from the North End and then take a side street, that's Merrimack Street, that's where Debbie's was. We began on an auspicious night. It was a snowstorm. I thought no one will ever come out. The place was packed. The place every Monday night was packed for about the next seven or eight months. Just unbelievable. A, a, a testament to the power of all the great players in the band. Claudio and I co-led it. We took turns leading it. Uh, Claudio, of course, was the standout star soloist. And I thought we would have a little uh, taste of that by, by uh, archival recording, which I have. And so you're going to hear uh, Claudio and Steve Catalano, who's the tenor saxophone soloist on this, playing on the uh, Cannonball Adderley tune arranged by Oliver Nelson called Introduction to a Samba. So we hear Steve Catalano on saxophone and then Claudio on trumpet. Claudio, we do love you.
You can see why that band made such an impression on me and on all of us at that time, and and to have found that tape, which we did recently, is was a great surprise. I've one the most important thing to say tonight, which is Claudio needs our love, but he also needs our support, and I hope you'll go to the GoFundMe page that was set up for him. It's GoFundMe.com. Claudio Roditi needs our help. That's easy to remember. I'm sure if you Google Claudio's name and GoFundMe, you can find it. And with that, let me let the music speak for the rest of the evening. And let me introduce the first band, which is uh, Greg Abate on saxophone. Uh, Greg Hopkins. Greg Hopkins on trumpet. Alan Mallet on piano. Mark Walker on drums, and Oscar, who put this whole thing together, Oscar Stagnato, Oscar Stagnaro on, on, on bass, so welcome. Thanks, man. Thank you. 
I'd like to invite Paul Del Niro to the stage. And Alberto Neto.
Thank you, guys. So we thank you. So we have, uh, as you've seen, many players here uh, from uh, the seventies. Like Jeff is going to come out, and people that have been playing with Claudio. This is what the concept of the band uh, is. And I would like to present um, Victor. Vente a tocar, digo. I'm going to let you present my. Uh, Co-partner in this organizing this and coordinating this program is uh, Fernando Brandao. Thank you, Oscar. Well, we want to thank all the musicians here uh, to participate in this this project. Uh, the idea initially was for the spring. Uh, the idea came from uh, from a friend uh, in Rio who told me that Pascual Mireles was organizing a concert like this. That's when I, I got aware of, of uh, Claudio's situation. And Claudio has been a great inspiration through these years. I've been showing his music to the students here at Berkeley. And uh, so immediately I thought we have to do this here. I mean, this was where he came to study. So I'm very happy to be able to put this together with Oscar and have all these wonderful musicians here. So enjoy uh, the second half of the concert. Good evening. Um, it's great to be back at Berkeley, Boston. I'm Victor Mendoza. I'm here representing uh, Berkeley, Valencia today, tonight. Uh, and uh, I just want to say, uh, Claudio uh, was a very important person in my life, musical life. Uh, because of all the things that he taught, you know, how sh he shared with me all the time. And still to this day, it's very funny. The other day I played a piece for him, something I was writing, and he goes, that was cool, but man, that chord change there, I don't know, man, it wasn't a little strange for me. So that's Claudio for you. But I used to uh, share with him, you know, I would call him and he says, what are you writing? And I would put the phone, we didn't have cell phones, so I would have put the phone on the piano. And then he would say, you know that F sharp? Uh-uh, that has to be an F. So that was Claudio again, you know, he was always teaching me and teaching all of us and uh, for me it's an honor and, and when I spoke with uh, <clears throat> Maria Iturriaga and uh, my, uh, the other folks in Valencia and they said you should be there because this is a very important man. We do play Claudio's music in Valencia in Spain and so anyway I want to thank uh, Oscar and Fernando for inviting me and it's great to be playing with these amazing musicians, these are my dear friends, all of them and all the other ones, and it's fantastic. I feel very honored. I've always felt very honored playing with all of these uh, gentlemen and ladies, um, the, the, the ones who were here before. So anyway, I thank you very much, for, and we hope you like what we're about to play.
Thank you very much. We'd really like to introduce, as uh, you heard in the, earlier in the statement, uh, Claudio's first trumpet teacher, Mr. Jeff Stout.
I'm going to introduce the first, the last band actually, and then we're going to have a jam session. We want to hopefully. So we have Bertram Lehman on drums. A uh, person from New York. He's a uh, Yankees. Uh, no, no. He's not a Red Sox. Uh, <laughs> he's not a Celtic. He's everything else. Well, Lincoln Goins on the bass. We have uh, Dan Moretti on the sax, on tenor sax. And also Jeff Stout, he's the, the person that uh, Claudio talked about in the video, that he was his teacher when Claudio was here. You were like 22 when were you were You were 22 when Claudio was your student. I just want to say that um, I take no credit whatsoever for how wonderful Claudio plays. He was great when I met him, and he's still great. <laughs> All 
All right, so we have the two more tunes and then one last one. And, and some of the tunes that you see in the program are Claudio's tunes, so this is super important, his legacy. We are, have played with him many times in many occasions, so that's another important part of this uh, concert. And don't forget, there is a link for a GoPro link in the program, so hopefully you could help him out. And uh, st stay until the end, please. All right, thanks.
Thank you very much. Thank you, Claudio. Hello. This is it. Nobody wants. I know nobody wants to leave, but Claudio will see you soon. I hope here in Boston playing with us, all right? Thanks everybody for coming. <laughs>